Okay, hello everybody. Uh, these are geometry notes. We're going to talk about section 10.5 today, and we're going to cover tangent lines. We're going to talk real quick about what a tangent line is, a couple of properties involving tangent lines, and then we're going to use those properties to do some examples on side two. All right, so here we go. Now, some of y'all kind of know what a tangent line of a circle is or what it means if something is tangent to a circle. Um, basically, what a tangent line is, it means that it intersects at one point. It intersects the circle at a single point at one in exactly one point. So this right here could be an example of a possible tangent line where it just goes right by the circle and grazes it, nicks it at one point, and then it keeps on going. Now, it doesn't have to be a full-fledged line with arrows on both ends. It can be a ray. So you could have like a... Uh, You could have a ray, or you could even have a segment that's tangent. Um, so you could have a segment that's tangent, a ray, or a line. But if it hits it at one point exactly, it means it's tangent. Okay? Now, you could also have circles that are tangent to each other, like two circles that are considered tangent. Um, just a real simple sketch. Something like this, where one circle next to another circle, um, if they hit at one point, it could be considered tangent. You could also have it where one of the circles is inside or on the interior of the other circle. Something like this. Where they would only intersect or touch at this one point. Now, just in case you ever see these terms, these circles are considered tangent to each other as well as these. But these circles are what we call externally tangent to each other. And these circles are what we would call internally tangent to each other. So externally tangent circles, internally tangent circles, just in case you see those terms. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and talk about um, one more term, and then we'll look at our two properties. Um, wherever the point is that they intersect at, that is referred to or known as or called the point of tangency. Obviously, a uh, pretty straightforward term. So like the point of tangency, that would be this point or this line and circle. Here's the point of tangency here. That's the point of tangency there. Okay, so if you see that term, point of tangency, um, it's referring to the point at which they intersect. All right, so first property that we're going to use and look at in this section, and this is uh, a very, very versatile and um, uh, much used property. It says that a radius and tangent line are always perpendicular. Uh, at the point of tangency. Okay, so whenever you have a radius and wherever it touches the tangent line at that point of tangency, it makes a 90 degree angle. They are perpendicular. Uh, so like for instance right here, radius tangent line, right here the angle that they make, 90 degrees. Perpendicular. So it's 90 on each side. Okay? Right here, uh, what's very common guys in a lot of diagrams, is them to have a triangle drawn. 
So they'll have like a liner segment that's tangent to the radius. And what they'll do is they'll make the third side and they'll make a right triangle. And you guys know right triangle, what do we always use a lot? Pythagorean theorem. So a very common type of diagram or problem you get with a tangent line and a radius is for a right triangle to be formed because you have perpendicular 90 degrees right there where they hit. Okay, over here, um, if you were to draw any type of third side um, coming out of the center point, you would have a triangle, a right triangle. Okay, now look guys, one thing to keep in mind in problems is that this is a radius. So let's say it's X. Well, if you don't know what this entire side is, sometimes you may, sometimes you may not, but you know what, at least this part of the side is also the radius, okay? So if they were to give you like this, you could add to it the radius to get the whole side, for instance, okay? All right, second property that we're going to use in this section a little bit is that two tangent segments from the same point are congruent. So two tangent segments from the same point are congruent. So for instance, right here, um, coming from the same exterior point, this segment is tangent, this segment hits where it's tangent, and those two segments are going to be congruent to each other. As long as they come out of the same point to where they hit being tangent, those are congruent. Okay? Um, something like this, this segment here, would be congruent to that. All right? Now, one common type, again, one common type of diagram or problem you might see where you kind of use or... Um, apply this property is a lot of times if you have something like this they will make a triangle they'll draw this segment or cord right here and now you have a triangle but it's not just any triangle it's an isosceles triangle because you have two congruent sides and guys, you're not going to mark these congruent. you got to remember this property, okay? Same with up here. They're not going to mark it 90 a lot of the times. You're going to have to remember that it's 90, perpendicular here. Over here, if you have a diagram like this, they might not draw a cord connecting the points. They might draw um, two radii. Here's a radius. Here's a radius. Now look, you don't have a triangle, rather you have a quadrilateral, but since both of these radii are congruent, same length, you have what type of quadrilateral? That's right, you have a kite. And we've gone over kite properties, so um, you know that from the first property, these are 90, um, and you've got other kite properties that we've talked about. So you have a kite picture formed for possible problems involving kites and using this property involving tangent lines. All right, so there we go. Information about tangent lines and a couple of properties. Let's go ahead and run through the example problems. All right, number one, we're gonna solve for X. We're given the tangent segment 15, this side is 19, and we want to get X, which is the radius of the triangle. Well, like I mentioned earlier, they're not going to, you know, tell you it's 90. They're going to want you to remember that it's 90, that it's perpendicular. So we have a right triangle. We can simply use Pythagorean theorem now. All right, so if we go ahead and plug our sides into Pythagorean theorem, this is the hypotenuse. 
So we have x squared plus 15 squared equals 19 squared. And a little bit of algebra here. If we square each of these, we get 225 and 361. Subtract 225 to get 136. And the square root of 136, we can approximate it out to get the length of that side. And you get about 11.7. Or remember, if they want an exact answer, keep it in square root form. Maybe try to um, simplify it if possible. All right, number two. Now, number two is similar to number one. Um, you have a right triangle form. Remember, it's 90 again, using the first property we talked about. But things are labeled a little bit differently. X is the radius here. This 8 is only for that part. So this is also X. Some people don't know what to label this as. Well, it's the same as this radius X. So now we have everything labeled. We can do the Pythagorean theorem. But remember, this is the entire side, the entire hypotenuse. So it's X plus 8. So the three sides that are plugged into the Pythagorean theorem are x and 20 for the legs, x plus 8 for the hypotenuse. All right, so we can go ahead and do x squared plus 20 squared equals the entire x plus 8 quantity squared. Now, this is going to be 400. Now guys, you don't just square X and square eight to get X squared plus 64. It's not that simple. You have to FOIL. Kind of like algebra one days, X plus eight times X plus eight. You gotta FOIL that. When you do so, you're gonna get X squared. You're gonna get two eight X um, two 8x terms that you can combine to get 16x. And then you, the last will give you 64, 8 times 8. Now watch, if you subtract the x squared, they cancel. So even though it looks like you might have a complicated quadratic or x squared equation, it comes back down to a very simple linear equation with only a regular x in it. Subtract 64 um, to get 336. And divide both sides by 16. And that will get you 21 for X. Now, guys, I know in this picture, it's not drawn exactly to scale. And I just made these numbers up. So it might not really look like this is 21 and this is 8. But numbers-wise, that's how it works out. Okay? So that's numbers 1 and 2. Let's take a look at number 3. All right, number 3, we're going to use a second property from the other side of the notes. Since these two segments are coming from the same external point here, they are congruent. So therefore, to solve for x, all you have to do is set these equal. And a little bit of algebra here. Um, add 4 to get 14. Subtract your x to get 4x. And dividing by 4 should give you 3.5 or 3.5 for x. And number 4. Okay, number 4, we have to find two things. We have to solve for x, which means we're probably going to have to make an equation, and get the perimeter. Now, the perimeter of the whole triangle we need, we need x first. Now, x is up here, and these two are congruent. So, we set 12 equal to 6x, and x is simply 2. Now, we can't get the perimeter until we get all of the missing sides and parts. 
Well, we know this is 40. Um, we know that this is 12. Now, this is the same as this, and we don't know either one of them. But we know that if this is 30, so is that part. And if the whole thing's 40, that leaves 10, which means this piece also 10. Now we have all of our sides and pieces we need. So the three sides of the triangle, 40. Um, add those to get 22. And this entire side is 30 plus 12 or um, 42. So the three sides to get the perimeter, we add them up. Um, here's x equals 2 from earlier. And for the perimeter P, we add the three sides, 40, 22, and 42. And that will give us a total of 104. And there you have it. That is 10.5, some problems about uh, some problems and information about tangent lines. Um, that's it for now. You guys have a good rest of your day. And take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.